So, hello everyone. My name is Luka Gerzic, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Belgrade war drying. Uh, it's a fun thing to do, if you ask, and uh, there are a lot of information you can pick up from the, from the war drying. So a little bit about myself. Um, I have some 17 years experience in the infrastructure stuff. Um, started from the 87, and uh, this is the hardware that we use for the um, <clears throat> war driving. The most important thing is, of course, that you have a pretty good battery in each of your devices, uh, especially that you have a good Wi-Fi, and I would recommend to use Alphas because they have really, really good transmission, uh, especially the one with, uh, with the RTL chip uh, 8187. Next thing that you should uh, try to look up is the good high gain antenna. Uh, this one was not a 9 dBi. And uh, any G device with the GPS, all right? <clears throat> um, be sure when you order alphas from the internet that you actually buy the original because there are a lot of counterfeits on, on the net from Chinese, all right? Uh, basically, the software is Debian, Linux, Kali, Ubuntu, whatever you like. The Kismet, which is the software, will give you all these uh, uh, hardware and software stuff uh, uh, combined. Uh, GIS Kismet will give you, if you don't know how to use SQL uh, and make queries with the, with the <coughs> GIS Kismet, you can get data out of the Kismet database. GPSD will be the um, uh, software which uh, will read the coordinates from the, your GPS device and record them into the Kismet. Um, I personally try not to use Google, so uh, get G JSON IO with the is very nice software run on the OpenStreet platform. Uh, it will give you exactly the same results as uh, Google Earth or whatever you uh, whatever else uh, software you like to use. For the um, Bluetooth connection, uh, which is broadcasting the GPS data, you can use the software GPS or BT. And you can create a lot of custom scripts to give you um, additional information from the war driving. The result looks something like this. And uh, as you can see, um, you can get the coordinates uh, on the streets with the open Wi Fi's or Wi Fi's of any kind. Uh, as well as full information about the manufacturer, the equipment, and the uh, type of encryption, and everything else you can imagine. And you can, of course, create a database. We ha I have uh, a database around uh, 30,000 Wi-Fi's all over the Belgrade. Uh, I encourage you to do this in any other town or country you are currently. And we can combine this data if you like. So. Uh, the data that you, you can pull out from this is interesting in many ways. <clears throat> First thing is that out of 28,000 Wi-Fi hotspots that we scanned, you can find around 13% open or easily accessible with the weak encryption. That means around 3,000 open Wi-Fi's usable. Uh, next thing is <clears throat> Uh, regarding the frequencies and the channels. Uh, if you wonder why your Wi-Fi is not working properly, um, that's probably because there are like uh, 10 users on the same channel as you are. So this, the reason behind this is because the vendors are locking, um, locking the, the devices, Wi-Fi devices on the same channel uh, these three channels, actually, which are not overlapping, as you can see on the standard uh, graphic below. And these are the numbers, of course. So as you can see, it's pretty populated in these three channels. And if you have Wi-Fi, switch to some other channel, probably get better reception and better uh, uh, connection to your internet. Next thing uh, is the <clears throat> amount of uh, the percentage of manufacturers that were we detected. As you can see in, in Belgrade, uh, TP-Link is like dominating. The next one is Pegatron. I personally never heard about the Pegatron until I did this. And Pegatron is actually a company which is building the new iPhone 6. 
They are building a lot of Wi-Fi devices. I don't know which chips are there, but uh, I'm going to investigate and maybe give you some other details later. And now the fun stuff <clears throat> of everything that we analyzed so far. As I told you, 13% of all scanned Wi-Fi hosts is usable. Uh, some of them were hidden, but that's no problem. Average speed from our scanners to the uh, Wi-Fi's were like around 54 megabits. So we had a good connection from the car. And I will remind you that we did this uh, while driving car around between 40 and 60 kilometers per hour. This can be also done by <clears throat> sending a drone over some location as well, or a motorcycle, or a boat, or whatever you like. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, it was interesting to find around 130 HP printers, easily accessible, and you could print whatever you like on those. Eight, out of 18 cameras, seven was with a live feed, meaning you could easily see what's inside somewhere the yards or a flat or whatever. Um, 52 devices were pretending to be something they are not. <clears throat> For example, we had multiple issues where router boards were uh, naming themselves as TP-Link or something like that. And what's interesting is that we also detected two open uh, access points with SSL strip and SSL strip uh, enabled meaning that they are intentionally open and trying to steal credentials from the regular users trying to use them for, for example, browsing some uh, HTTPS website. Regarding provider hotspots, we had um, these numbers. There's just a further reference. And maybe the fun thing with Serbia is the naming. As you can see, there are many. <laughs> <laughs> Many funny names regarding the, well, Serbian guys and, and girls are, I think, funny <laughs> sometimes. Uh, maybe the fairy word one is, there is no such thing as a free lunch, translated in Serbian, yeah. So hopefully you have some laugh. What's the future? Well, this is the future. Um, the upper, upper link is Red Pitaya. I would uh, personally recommend you download some information regarding that board. It's awesome. And below picture is a GSM station, custom made. This GSM station is pictured here with the beagle bone and the battery. Uh, maybe you heard about uh, the stuff they are discovering in the United States uh, regarding the rogue GSM station. This is, you're looking at it. So basically, this is something that will come up very, very soon in other parts of Europe as well. And thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Should. Uh, I did something like that about six years ago, and the stability of the RTL driver was horrendous. Just uh, we have never, no issues. Uh, the thing I forgot to mention during my presentation is that uh, we use multiple uh, alphas uh, because we locked the one alpha to one channel because you see seen how three channels are uh, uh, like crowded, so we get better results. Uh, no issues whatsoever. No, no, perfectly worked from the first day. Any other questions? Yes, it's so Uh, it was using the, some kind of the middle device. We, we were not able to, to give, get more information from that because we were already passed through that location. But we, what we did is if we detected uh, open Wi-Fi, we tried a few things through that Wi-Fi to see what can we see. And one of the things, one of the tests were uh, if the HTTPS is removed or not. And we also try to detect if the host, the AP, is using uh, some kind of DNS spoof with testing uh, uh, DNS queries for the Facebook, Twitter, and some popular other sites.
Yes. Tell us the name of the top four on your last slide. Yeah, uh, the red one, the red pitaya. Red pitaya. Oh, great. <laughs> It's it's a uh, really really awesome stuff. It's uh, it, it can be uh, it it can work as an oscilloscope as well, multimeter, whatever you like. Very very cool stuff. Um, I'll give the details later. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, thank. Uh, over the internet. <laughs> you cannot buy everything, you need to assemble a few things for yourself, right? Thank you. Thanks.